next song is a uh, another worship song that I really like. It's uh, His Mercy is More. So.
we do need more of you, Lord. We pray that you'll fill our home here, our church home here with your presence. Sunday school, and one is for Aunt Carol Wilson for health, and Ashley Bell. And Father, you know exactly what's going on in their lives. I pray, Father, that you will reach out, reach down, touch them, Father. And I pray, Father, that you're doing it such a way that they know that we, that you were uh, personally involved in their in their lives and their healing, Father. 
uh, Father, again, all these folks that we've prayed for, Father, my biggest prayer is all is that each each one knows you as Lord and Savior. But again, we just want to praise you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. You know, it's... I just praise the Lord for... And, uh, and, I, and, I, and I pray for all our young people that they will get involved in the Lord's work. And it's always... It's always made me cry when my kids, you know, serve the Lord, especially when they sing. It just, it just makes a dad proud in the right way. So, at any rate, uh, every day with Jesus is still our overall theme for a little bit longer. It's what it's going to be that, whether it's that go whatever I go on to, because we need that every day with Jesus. Man, I don't, I don't know about you guys. We each have. The, our own personal load of stuff, whatever it looks like. Some of it's just day to day, you know, living in this world. You know, the things that go on are. Then sometimes it's family things. Sometimes it's friend things. Sometimes it's, you know, especially if you're working with folks, and then you take, you know, they your their burdens become your burdens as well, and it just seems overwhelming at times. It would be if it were not for Jesus. Amen? Because Jesus says, man, when you get over, when you get too much on your plate, when you're heavy laden, when you're burdened, he says, bring it to me. Matter of fact, we don't even have to wait till the plate's full. We need to be taking that stuff to him as it, as it happens. Because he's the one that's going to give us the direction, the wisdom, the resources, or whatever it is that we need to take care of business, amen? So, every day with Jesus. But I want to talk this morning about the signs of the times. We were kind of more talking about that, like I said, a little bit in Sunday school. Some of the stuff that's going on. And, you know, back to, and, and Jesus told us a few times, says, you know, it's going to be like in the days of Noah. It's going to be like the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, when things get bad and people are just doing whatever floats their boat. And we were talking about that reprobate mind. God will let you go there if that's your direction that you want to take. But here's the thing I want to, I want to say this, uh, uh, Brett, Serena, and y'all's conversation. You know, even in the midst of that darkness that comes into their lives, God is still light. God's presence and truth are still around these folks, you know, it's, you know, it may be the thing that God spends more time other areas where people are receptive, but his truth still prevails. And it can still peek through at times. You know, I believe that even in, in, when Pharaoh was hardening his own heart, if he had turned to God, because he was on the verge a couple times, when he could see God working and he still chose to disobey there's that thing, you can either turn and, and, and say, you know, say, God, you're right, or you just keep walking in your in, in, in your sin. As, many, as big as our sins, as Seth was saying, as big as, as many as our sins are, God's grace and mercy is even bigger. Amen? Well, with that said, Father, I just want to come before you this morning, Father, and I just want to, this message is kind of one of those ones where we, we just got to prepare ourselves. We've got to be ready. We've been talking about that the last couple of weeks as well, but this talk about the signs of the times, Father. And we're not to get overwhelmed and we're not to get, you know, like, oh, oh woe is me. No, we're saved. There's no woe. We rejoice in Jesus. This isn't our home, Father. I pray that you're helping us be preparing ourselves for that transition. You know, moving is a pain sometimes, but man, when we move into heaven, move into our mansion, that is not going to be, that's going to, the, it's got a prepaid moving truck. With people who are doing the, 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 the packing, if you will. And so, Father, I just want to praise you and thank you again for how awesome you are to us. Thank you for being a good God, a loving God. 
but also a just God. Because when we get there, Father, we don't have to worry about somebody breaking in, killing, stealing, and destroying. That's 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 to it. That's at an end. We thank you for that. And Father, again, we just praise you. Thank you in Jesus' name. Open our eyes that we might see you. In Christ's name, I pray. Amen. Because guys, things are happening all over the world. We were talking about this morning the stuff that's happening over Pakistan other parts of the world where God's people, God's church is being attacked, burned down, torn down. But you know, in the, it's in the midst of persecution that truth grows, that people come to see Jesus. Situation's not good, but God's bringing good out of it, amen? But things are happening. Matter of fact, the uh, that whole story I was, I was reading this morning, um, as you know, Sharina, you said about the person, you know, saying that Jesus, Jesus Christ, okay, that's part of it. He's the Messiah, right? But yet they're calling him the Antichrist. You cannot be Christ and Antichrist at the same time. One cancels out the other type of situation. And we know that Jesus lived as all kind of empirical evidence of that. And he said, see to it that you are not misled. For many will come in my name saying, I am he. And the time is near. Do not go after them. There are going to be many antichrists. There's going to be the biggie when that, when that time happens, but there are going to be many antichrists that will be trying to lead God's people astray. Those folks who don't know Jesus are going to be very susceptible. But if we're not careful, if we don't stay in the Word, studying it for ourselves, coming together, encouraging one another, we could get led astray and sweat. Because he says, do not be misled. All right? And like we talked about last week, being the, the thief in the night, you know, if we had, if the thief had sent us a, 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 you know, a warning card or something, we could be ready for him, right? But it doesn't happen that way. A thief comes when you when you least expect it. That's why we have got to be on our guard. Now we're talking about more the, the spiritual side of that thing. You know, things can happen if we're not careful. Or we get prideful and say, well, that's, that's not going to happen to me. You know, we know that pride comes before downfall. Amen. 1 Thessalonians 5, 3 says, While they are saying peace and safety... Because like I said, that's, we hear those words all the time, don't we, in the news? That's not what they mean. They're, they're trying, all that, all that is a smoke screen. Okay? Then destruction will come upon them suddenly like labor pains upon a woman with a child, and they will not escape. I can't speak to that personally. But you ladies in the house, and I think that's all the ones that are, that are present, have had a child. You're going along, you know, I know you look like a beach ball, big one or whatever. And thinking, man, I got plenty of time to do this, do that, all of a sudden, bam! There they are. Those labor pains come. There are going to be things, bad things happening in this world. We just got to make sure we're focused. We got to make sure our eyes are staying on Jesus. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Because there's things that he's told us to do, no matter what. And, and, and like I said, back to that thing, you know, that's why it's important for us to be constantly letting those folks that we love and know about Christ. That, for salvation, mainly, but also we need to be discipling our loved ones. Because there's enough stuff in this world that's going to keep them distracted. And they'll be wind up being carnal, carnal minded. We need that they need to be prepared as well. That's part of our job.
Just like this scripture here in Luke chapter 21 talks about the false teacher. Peter talks about it over in 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. But false prophets also arose among the people, just as there will be false uh, teachers among you who are secretly who will secretly introduce the destructive heresies, even denying the master who, who bought them, bringing swift destruction upon themselves. Many will follow their uh, sensuality, and because of them the way of truth will be maligned. That will, it's out of an alignment. Anybody have a car ever with the tires out of alignment? It just doesn't drive very smoothly, and it wears your tires out faster. There are going to be the folks going to fall into that that are Christians. And it says, you know, God's going to have to wind up taking them out. we got to make sure. we got It's going to happen. It's already happening. we got people out there that are, that are saying this and that and Jesus this and that. It's not true. Stick to the word. Because I'm, I'm, what we talked about last week too, it says that only God the Father knows when Jesus is coming back. Jesus himself doesn't. But be prepared. Like I said, we said, whatever you do in life, you want to be prepared because you want to do it well. Same thing in our spiritual lives. More importantly in our spiritual lives, we are to be on our guard, be alert, being faithful to what the, the Master's given us. He's given her uh, marching orders. They have not changed. Amen. Acts chapter 20, verses 29 to 31. I know that after my departure, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. And from among your own selves, men will arise speaking perverse things to draw away the disciples after them. Therefore, be on the alert. Remembering that night and day for a period of three years, I did not cease to admonish each one of one with tears. Admonish, like I said, that we need to speak the truth in love, but we need to speak the truth firmly. If it's a command of the Lord, we need to know, people need to know that's a, that is a command, that is what we're supposed to be doing or not doing, depending on which way the command goes, is not a suggestion. Because the people got to got the choice between a suggestion and a command, guess which way they're going to go? They're going to lean toward the suggestion because it's easier or it's an option. Being Christians, doing God's will is not an option, folks. Wolves among the, sh the flock. And we, we're all seeing this. We're seeing different things where the evil Evil people, they, they're going to do, do, do evil things if it protects them. People, good people will be turned away too. Like I said, you know, like I said, everybody's got their price. We need to be above reproach in that. And we've got to remember, it's, it's, not, it's not money that's going to bring us peace and joy. Usually it brings more problems because we can see it going on in our government and stuff. <clears throat> There's a command all throughout this in the, these verses I've been sharing so far. It says, take heed. That basically means to keep your eyes open we are to be spiritually same thing you know in the physical world we need spiritual I mean, uh, we need uh, situational awareness but more importantly we need it spiritually Satan like I said if, if he showed up with a red suit on with you know the, the pointy fork and the tail and all that stuff we would listen to him we had a year of the devil, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he masquerades as an angel of light. He says things that sound so pleasing to the ear. 
But it's there that God leads us astray to keep us from, from doing what... If we, it's just like when I teach in the security classes. We're responsible for the posts that we've been assigned. But sometimes people will do something over here to distract you, to pull you off your post so there's an easy entry. We need to make sure that we are about the business of protecting our families, our loved ones, fellow Christians, from the, like I said, those wolves that are in sheep's clothing that come among us. Take heed, keep your eyes open. We've got to be on our guard. He talks about, I know that after my departure, again, he's warning them. It's not the fact that they sneak up without us knowing about it. We're being given the warning. There's danger. Look out. Watch out. Don't go in the water. I remember that phrase. I didn't, I didn't watch the Jaws movies. I think I read a little bit of the, the first, the book. But I remember that line says, when you think it's safe to go back in the water. I don't know, after watching Meg 2, I ain't going back in the water, no. <laughs> but at any rate, there's danger out there. God's Word tells us about that. He warns us, not just so we'll be scared, but that we'll be ready, we'll be alert. Because it's going to happen. Those, those false teachers, false prophets are coming. Already here in some cases. 1 John chapter 2, verses 18 and 19 says this, Children, it is the last hour, and just as you heard that Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have appeared. From this we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not really of us. For if they had been of us, they would have remained with us. But they went out so that it, it would be shown that they are, that they all are not of us. That's the thing we got to we got to we got to watch out. That's why it's important. If you're going to go to, and I've got we've got a good friend of ours that's going and helping us some folks, and and I just you know my main the caution to her was just just watch out, listen, and make sure the truth is being shared. Okay. Because they come in, they, they, they do their destruction, and they go out thinking, and you think, oh yeah, he's one of us. How many of us have been in a situation where you thought somebody was your friend, your brother or sister in Christ, and they weren't? I don't mean to bring this up again, but that movie Meg 2, here they are, they got their group, that they're serving, and one of their inner circle is a traitor. I loved it when the big shark got her. She got her instant karma. <laughs> any rate, but that's, that's the case. We've got to be, make sure, do the litmus test. Don't just assume somebody knows Jesus. Ask them, tell them to share their story, how they came to know Christ. If there's anything that's kind of, you're not, they're not real solid on, then ask them, ask more questions. All right, because I heard someone tell a story the other day, and it was like, you're not quite sure because it all sounds kind of spiritual, but not quite. Well, when did you ask Christ in your heart? You Got to be specific. Not for only our part to make sure that we don't have false teachers among us, but we want to make sure that they are truly saved. Amen. It'd be a sad thing where you know they think they are. And you kind of, kind of help them, maybe lead them to believe that they are, because oh yeah, you're my brother in Christ. Well, make sure, and they shouldn't be offended by that. That's part of our witness, amen. And we've got to know, 100%. Are we sure? Luke chapter 21, verses 25 to 27. There will be signs in the in the sun and the moons and the stars. 
and on earth this dismay among nations and perfection in perplexity at the roaring of the sea and the waves, men fainting from fear and the expectation of the, the things which are coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. That's going to be that, you know, and I don't know how God's going to do that, but it says when he comes back, he's going to be coming in the clouds like he left. But in this case, everybody that's on the earth at that time will see it. I don't know if that's going to be because of cameras and stuff. I don't know how he's going to work that out. Because that's just my God. He's that big. And I'm not going to worry about that. He says it's going to happen. I believe him. It's going to take place. Because he's a whole lot bigger than I am. A whole lot smarter than I am. It's going to happen, folks. We just got to be prepped ourselves and make sure we're on alert and we're helping others do the same. Let's look at Luke uh, chapter 21, verse 28. But then these things begin to take place. Straighten up and lift up your heads because your redemption is drawing near. There's that thing, there's, a, there's an encouragement there. There's a, hey, you know, when things turn in our favor type of thing, we lift up our head, we start looking. Here comes our hero. You know, it's almost like some of these movies, things like, here comes Superman. Oh, you know, well, Jesus got, he's got, Superman got nothing on Jesus. The point being, it says, uh, I like it, straighten up, lift up your heads because of your redemption is drawing near. <coughs> What I like about where the situation, guys, positionally where we're at, Brett, you are spot on this morning. God already sees us as if we're in heaven. Our, that's our positional truth. We're already positioned. All right? The situation was uh, we're here still physically on this earth. But our... Our rapture out of here could happen any moment, folks. There is nothing else that has to happen in, in history for us to be zipped out. So we need to be living like that. Let me ask you this question. You know, back in the day, it's uh, what was the, among the Southern Baptists, the big thing was. Uh, um, my brain just dropped dead on me. Everyone reach one or something to that effect. Well, the new thing that is on the same lines is who's your one? Who's that one person? Sometimes we get overwhelmed if I have to think about trying to reach a, a big group. Pick out one that you can pray for, that you can, you know, send a, and encouragement cards to whatever it is however there's different ways we can do that nowadays but who's your one think about that that's your homework find that one person that you can start but once that one's done you encourage them to you know get their one and you get you grab another that's more bite size to eating that out that spiritual elephant if you will who's your one be that Andrew for the Lord where you're bringing someone to Christ. Straighten up. Lift up your heads because your redemption is drawing near. Matthew 24, 37. For the coming of the Son of Man will be just like the days of Noah. Things are bad, aren't they? I mean, just look at the, the stuff that people are... Uh, it's gone crazy. That's how it was in the day of Noah. Things were bad. Noah took, what, 126 years or something like that to build the, <coughs> the ark? That's a long time. I don't know if it was because it was the first one that was ever built and he had, he had to go, you know, he was getting the blueprints from God directly. But the fact is that nobody in that in that time turn their hearts to the Lord 
I, I can just, you know, like, I don't, I don't know if this actually happened or not, but could you think about that? Here the rain starts. And the doors, God says it's time, he closes the doors. And the rain is getting up, you know, to their knees, their waist, their neck. Somebody had to be beating on that door. But it's too late. As long as you're breathing, it's not too late to accept Jesus Christ. Enough. But once you, that breath is gone, it's too late. We need to be looking for Jesus. Amen. Amen. Luke 17, verses 28 and 30. It was the same as happened in the days of Lot. They were eating, they were drinking, they were buying, they were selling, they were planting, they were building. It will be just the same on the day that the Son of Man is revealed. Things are going to be happening like normal, but I mean, like I said, it's going to have all that evil stuff, more so. It's just that we got to be looking at the signs of the times, folks, because it's going to look, some of it's going to look normal. There's other things that are going to be drastically different. Be ready, be ready, be ready. Hebrews 11.10 For he was looking for the, for the city which has foundations whose architect and builder is God. How many of us looking forward, forward to that city? Called Zion. In heaven. The city of God. I mean, it's just some of the description in, in the scriptures that the streets are going to be made of this kind of translucent gold but beyond our, our, our imagination. But at the same time, I just, I just want us to remind us, we're not home yet. We are not home yet. God is the builder of our true home. And we need to keep our minds, as we're doing our work here for the Lord, we still keep, gotta keep our minds on heaven. That's our destination. That's what should spur us on, encourage us to keep the you know keep running the good race, the, the fight the fight that He's put before us. We've got a home that we're heading for. Remember, we're passing through. We're not citizens here. We're kind of the aliens, if you will. Just, again, be alert. Be on your guard. Be in the Word of God. God gave it to us for a purpose. It will not only guide you, but protect you, grow you, mature you. And Brett, you're so, you're so right about what you're saying this morning. There are a lot of Christians. A lot of times when you walk into a sanctuary where there's adults, it ought to sound like adults, not like a nursery. And many times it sounds like a nursery. We got the whining, the complaining, belly aching. Be strong in the Lord. Father, we just want to praise you this morning for who you are. Thank you, Father, for preparing a place for us in heaven. Father, that doesn't mean we stop working. It doesn't mean that we go sit up on the on the rooftop waiting for you. Because we don't know when that's going to happen. But we need to stay busy. We need to be watching. We need to be ready. But Father, our part of our goal is to know Christ. That means that means there's a maturing process. There we are to be holy as you are as you are holy. But Father, our goal is to bring more guests to the to the table. Not that we get brownie points. I mean, there's rewards for that, but it's the fact that it pleases you. It's your will is that no man 
perish. It's your will that all receive Christ and that are saved. We know that they're not because people have, have a choice, but we got to make it a, do everything possible to, to give them that opportunity. So Father, help us again to be on our guard, to be alert, to take heed as we live this life for you. Again, these things we ask in Christ's name. Amen. Let's go ahead and stand. We have, uh, we have our hymn of invitation. And think about that, you know. Uh, you know, we're talking about there's a difference between wishful thinking and actively pursuing. Actively <clears throat> having that desire for, for the Lord. Because it means you can be walking. You can be doing something to make it happen. In the garden. It's on the uh, bulletin, though. I come to the garden alone. Yeah. 
Amen. Amen. I encourage you. That, that's talking about that thing. We need to have that time when we can get alone with God. Before all the busyness, all the hubbub, the phone starts ringing, all that kind of stuff. I don't know about you guys, but my, my phone starts buzzing early. I mean, it's either a uh, a group ta from the command structure or the chaplain corps or 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 home or whatever the case may be. Those things get they start or sales calls, all that kind of stuff. Part of the time when you get on with the Lord, when things the day is still fresh. anybody anybody catch one of God's names in that song? I mentioned it three times. Sorry. It's Andy. Andy. And he walks with me, and he talks with me, right. and he tells me. <laughs> anyway, a little humor there. All right, let's uh, let's close in prayer. Um, Brother Brian, would you close us? Remember tomorrow night, if you can, go by and join them for prayer. It's just a, it's just a short bit of time, but it represents the church as well. I know Catherine will be there. Um, and like I said, just pray for those things that are important to us as a church, but also as a community and a country as well. All right, anything else? If not, Brian?